Yes, sir. It is your planet. It is my planet. It's our planet. It's mostly my planet. And, you know, it's not it's never going to be Joe Biden's planet. Planet hog, baby. Coming back at you. Yes, man. Yes, man. So today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would. Well, first, hello. How are you? How the hell are you? But today I actually want to talk about. Under Armour. Under Armour is, uh, well, (laughs) they are taking the Coca-Cola blueprint for outrage. Yes, indeedy. It's your planet. It is my planet. It's our planet. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we will no longer be selling Under Armour products on this planet. Planet Hog. Yes, indeed. I would like to welcome all of you. Thank you for tuning in once again. I hope your week has been fantabulous as mine has been long and oh man, I'm just really tired. I'm, not gonna lie. I'm really, really tired, but I think it's because I've switched from working a day shift schedule and a night schedule multiple times in the last couple of weeks. So yeah, I'm, 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 I just need a nap, man. I need a nap. But anyway, welcome. Uh, so today I want to talk to you guys about uh, Under Armour, kind of putting their foot in their mouth and uh, taking a page out of Coca-Cola's How to Piss People the Fuck Off book. Um, and then, you know, I'll kind of share a little bit of insights on that. And then at the end, I mean, it's Planet Hog. We got to have a little bit of fun, man. So Under Armour basically wants their employees to be less white. Well, here at Planet Hog, I have uh, come up with three companies that need to encourage their companies to be more white. So without further ado, let's talk about Under Armour. Under Armour, ladies and gentlemen, I I just don't understand this. (laughs) I don't understand who these people are making these decisions. I'll tell you something. This has given me a little bit of, uh, well, I'll say this. Successful people are just that. They're just successful. That's it. They're not necessarily any more intelligent than you or I. How do I know that? Because somebody high up in the company had to say, yes, this is a good idea. Let's make our employees watch basically what amounts to and yeah i'm reading the the headline here from daily wire anti-white yes that's exactly what it is why do you care you're black ah good question stupid question good question um not too long ago in the history of my folks here we experienced something similar to this and it wasn't good and i was one of those idiots that actually bought into what dr king said yeah yeah And I'm starting to see now that, you know, that's, we are the minority. Um, I was one of those people that said, yeah, let's just not do that in general. That's probably just a bad business practice, uh, however it's laid out to kind of uh, judge people by their skin color. So, but I missed the boat because apparently what that, what the whole civil rights movement was for was to rest control of the racism scepter from the vile hands of the white man and bestow upon our heads the crown. Apparently it was all about fighting for the right to be racist. Hmm. Not sure I like that game. Why? Oh, also, dumb question. But Easily answered. Because if we play this game, the more we continue to play this game, where we are increasingly making life unlivable for a specific group of people who just happens to be the majority of the population of this nation. I really don't get the race war people. But then again, if you were smart, you wouldn't be saying shit like this. So, eh. 
You know, it makes sense that you would say it because you don't make sense. But just to talk to them from a uh, from a tactical standpoint, what is your plan? We are 13 roughly black people, 13 percent of the population. What is your plan? Spread pretty far, pretty thin, but the majority of us are centrally located in pretty much the biggest city of every state. So actually, your enemy outnumbers you and is essentially surrounding you. Okay. Okay. Uh, How about tactics? You got tactics? Oh, what's that? Actively killing off members of your own group. Got it. Okay. Um... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I see here, uh, well, that there's a lot of us who don't know how to hold a firearm correctly, right? I mean, I watch First 48 and shit, so okay, all right. No, but seriously, these, these, these people who are all about this idea of the race war from the black side, I just don't understand your tactics or if you're breathing the same air that I am or if you see the same board that I see. But anyway, that aside, as long as you allow this, I get to be racist, to perpetuate, all you're doing is allowing the pendulum to keep swinging. And then the pendulum will swing back the other way. I just want to stop it. Let's just not not let it swing anyway. But as long as you continue to do this, you guarantee and mark my words you guarantee that racism in america will become a self-fulfilling prophecy how oh because right now you have somebody who works for under armor a white person who's not racist let's just pick one of them i'm sure there's a lot of them being forced to watch training that tells them One of the precepts of this training is that they are racist simply for being white, regardless of what else they have done in their life, which is insane. Because ultimately, the only way to stop racism at that point, like she doesn't I don't even think she understands the logic of what she's saying. So if white people are inherently racist for being white, the only way they could not be racist is to be dead. Because as long as you're alive, you'll be white. No matter how much of this horseshit training you endure, you'll be white. And maybe that's the point of this horseshit training is to make them, you know, they're like, oh my God, if I have to sit through this again, I'm going to shoot myself. Maybe that's, eh, you might have stumbled on something. But in all seriousness. So you'll have somebody who's not a racist person, who's subju- subjugated to this horseshit. And is probably outraged by it and offended by it because, guess what? They're not a racist person. They weren't. And then they're upset. They go home. They complain about it. Who's listening? I'm not even to see. I'm not even dealing with the people who are doing the training. Who's listening? Who gets to see the stuff that their parents are put through for being white? Who gets to see on TV stop being white? Who gets to see white people being... Uh, demonized and castigated wholesale. Oh, that, that'd be the youngins. And why does that matter? Because right now you have a bunch of youngins who are acting out, saying that white people are racist, and believing that there's racism everywhere because of the stories that they heard growing up. Not because of anything that they actually experienced in most cases, I'm willing to bet. So you have a lot of second, third generation black kids from, you know, parents who were in the civil rights era. My parents, that was their era. Who And I heard the stories from my parents about the stuff they had to go through. And you learn about it in school. You see it in school. But that's not your reality. And to act like that's your reality is to shit on all of the progress that was made and all of the people who paid that price. And that's why I am the way I am. Their problems are not our problems. That's not to say we don't have problems. Everybody has problems. But their problems are not our problems. Simply because we are the same skin color. 
Name me a water fountain that you can't drink at. Name me a bathroom that you can't use. Well, the bathroom thing is touchy because you might be a Z. Their problems are not our problems, but you grew up hearing about it because they don't want you to forget. And that's important. They want you to respect your history, and that's important. But respecting your history is also acknowledging that you're no longer in it. So you give it its rightful respect by not bastardizing and prostituting it at every turn just because you're a shitty person. So, man, I'm sorry, this really, this really pisses me off um, because it's so disrespectful to the people who actually paid that set, who paid that bill. Anyhow, whew, we need to cool down here at Planet Hog. Let me take a little sip, a little sip. Anyhow, excuse me. <clears throat> so having those parents who went through that and they tell you that and you learn about it, there are a lot of people who I think an unintended consequence of that is you develop this Don Quixote like where you start to see racism where it may not necessarily exist. It's a windmill. It's not a it's not an evil night. So and I think some of that is driven by boredom, guilt. And look, if someone is telling you that you'll never get ahead from the jump, then you have an excuse to never really try. Anyhow, Under Armour, doing this horseshit. And racism, you mark my words, it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because just like those black kids that grew up listening to their parents' stories, and now they're out there thinking it's everywhere and acting on that, even though you're not in that era, how do you know you're not dead? You're not in that era. Even though your allies are calling you colored and you allow it. But just like you acted out on it and, you know, you, uh, I mean, you in a general sense, just like that's being acted out now by people who were not a part of that, who just heard about it growing up. Uh -huh. Let's go back to the Under Armour lady and her kids. Who's growing up in it now, though? So racism will be as long as this persists. And I think it will, because I think if nothing else, 2020 has shown you that corporations have zero spine. They just kind of blow with the wind. Which I guess is the residue of chasing the dollar. If you're in it for the dollar, then OK, you're subject to the whims of the masses. I get it. I suppose I don't really respect it, but I get it. I think everybody should have hard and fast principles that you're willing to go to the mat for, so to speak. But the corporations have showed us they'll just go wherever public opinion leads them. So there will be more of this. The, the, Under Armour was just the latest domino to fall. Who do you think has anti-white training next? I mean, I would say Amazon, but Amazon, they probably already had it. They've probably been had that now. They probably have a whole anti-white division that's filled with white people. <laughs> oh shit! They would they would do some shit like that though. They're just non-race identifying or whatever. Whatever's next, right? They're they're uh, they're they're transracial. <laughs> Anyhow, um, but racism will become. A self-fulfilling prophecy. And again, like I said, at the onset of this, if she has in her mind an idea of stop, stop being white, then that means she has to stop being black, too. She has to stop being Hispanic, too. 
or Latinx is probably what they would call it. This is just bad all around. But it will continue. It absolutely will continue. I just don't understand what it's going to take for the people who are just going along. Because, you know, how could you as a white person who is a liberal, right? So you ushered in all this horse shit. Congratulations. Um, but how could you still, surely you're not still subscribed to this, that yes, I need to be less white. Surely you're not. Surely at now you've, re- you've recognized the error in your ways. I don't know. I don't know. So we're over here at OutKick, the coverage. We're at their website. Uh, and the article reads, Under Armour maintaining that white employees watch anti-white training videos. Coca-Cola isn't the only major company telling employees that white people are bad. An internal whistleblower at Under Armour provided the Daily Wire with videos of a training session its white employees were mandated to take last spring. An anti-white training session, that is. I do appreciate that his candor here. Under Armour forced its white, quote, forced its white employees to participate in a training program that asked them to consider ways in which they might be racist. The outlet concludes from the viewed material. You know what? Now that I'm reading this... I had to, there was a diversity email that some department sent around about asking what it's like to be black in my company and I just deleted it. I just didn't really think about it because it's it's dumb. Um and they those bastards they sent that to me like eight times like hey, we haven't heard from you. Hey, we haven't heard from you. And I was just going to wait till they made a big deal about it and I was going to be like wait a minute. So I just want to be sh- I got everything straight that you're singling me out because I'm I'm black and I didn't do this little thing. Did you give it to the white people? No. Ah. And then I could retire early. Alas, it was not to be. Anyway, that's right. Every white employee was forced to take a course to just to find out just how racist they are. The program even asked employees how many, quote, virtually all white weddings and funerals they've attended oh oh I, I can answer this one um because the, those are all things related to family uh, is there any other questions it's easy all right let's move on yet before the white workers had a chance to think back to every wedding and funeral they'd been to the moderator interrupted to say the last quote the last one should be something that you are thinking about if you are a w- wait what The last one should be something that you are thinking about if you are white for the rest of your life. Okay. Uh, Got that? If, quote, if you are white. You should think about how many funerals of white people you've been to, quote, for the rest of your life. For those looking to get a job at Under Armour, judging and seeing others as equal, regardless of their skin color, is a no-go. The program singles out the phrase, quote, I was taught to treat everyone the same as troubling when said by a white person. So, in the name of racism, we want white people to see black people as black first? Huh. Well, then if you do that, then any behavior that they see will be attributed to that black person, ergo will be attributed to blackness because that's what you want them to see them as. So you are basically laying the groundwork to create new stereotypes. This is progressive. All right. I dig it. Here are some of the other narratives used by white people that Under Armour is tired of in its quote, above the surface, dominant white progressive narratives category. Oh, my God. 
the first one, quote, I have people of color in my family. OK, so they can't actually prove that they're not racist by virtue of the fact that they have people of other races in their family. And, quote, I used to live in New York. <laughs> That's funny. That is hilarious. But I get it. If you live in New York, it's hard to be a racist. I mean, it's hard to be a functional racist. I mean, unless you're rich and you, just, you can just sit there and not have to do anything. But otherwise, you're going to come into a lot of different people in New York. I get that, too. Both of these, both of, both of these statements have merits. But they are being dismissed wholesale. So you can't even actually have a discussion because the left does not like to have discussions because none of their shit actually makes sense. It's all fueled by emotions and whims and specious statements. But none of it actually holds up when you put just the most basic criticism to it. If you lived in, um, back on the article now, if you used to live in New York, don't say it. It might be a deal breaker. Quote, I'm hoping that those questions for most white people surface, that there's a little more going on than, quote, we were just taught to see everyone as equal. The program's host added. These companies are awful. Cowards. All of them. I agree. Here, here. I will say it again. As a country, we have entered a dangerous place where skin color is seen before individuality. On Sunday, I discussed my reaction to a college staffer who grew, f who grew fed up with her, obsessor, or with her employer's obsession with race. This situation is deeply troubling, and it's the exact environment that should be punished, not promoted. Agree? I've said on many occasions that I have a grave fear that Americans are losing the ability to see other Americans as individuals. Instead, we are seen only by our skin colors. Mm -hmm. The worst part is that the most, influential, it, the most influential outlets and figures are pushing for more of that, not less. I agree. And we will get more of it. It's becoming the norm across corporate America. Anyway, Under Armour... Consumers can now rest assured that if their new shirt was put together by a white person, that employee has <laughs> properly completed mandatory anti-white training. Here, here, Mr. Bobby Burak. Um, yeah, man. That is exactly what's happening. That people are being taught to essentially stereotype. And who's leading the charge? The people calling themselves progressives. It makes sense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go, like I said, there are some companies out there that I think need to be a little bit more white. So without further ado, starting the list off is McDonald's. Mickey D's makes the list because God knows I am tired of seeing these goddamn soulful Big Mac commercials. There was some kind of weird infusion with like jazz hip hop. Like when did McDonald's become like it, it's just straight black now. All the people black. You know, this all, all this all this like jazz shit, like, okay, we get who you're catering to. They even do the red, black, and green flag in, in um February, I, I think they do. One of these months they do red, black, and green. And I don't even think they really know what that flag means, but hmm, much like Nancy Pelosi and them didn't know what the Kinte Club meant that they were donning. Ah, oh, boy. But suffice it to say, McDonald's. Can we, can we whiten up a little bit? Whiten up. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm th like, they had every aspect of black life covered. They've got commercials for basketball. They've got commercials for... Uh, I, I, I bullshit you not. I saw one where it was like some guy... It was like his first day at a job or some shit. And like him and his dad used to have breakfast there. And it was like him and his dad. And then before he went to work, it was like a deep commercial. It was fucking McDonald's. Fuck. You don't mean that much to black people, I don't think. I don't know. I don't speak for all of us. I speak for Hog, and Hog is a Burger King man. 
get that Texas double whopper with extra jalapenos. All right. So McDonald's, just whiten up just a little for me, please. Number two, no one's going to be surprised by this one, the NBA. Mm, gone are the days of John Stockton. Yeah, I'm not talking about Jason Williams White. No, 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 no. I'm not even talking about Chris Anderson, the Birdman White. No, 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 no. I'm talking John Stockton, Detlef Shrimp. I mean White White. I'm talking Matt Geiger White, Greg Ostertag White. I mean, it made it more interesting. I, if there were an all-white NBA team, that team would be, I don't know why no one's, I mean, I know why they've done it. They'd be called racist. And it would be really funny if it happened. I would support that team. I, I would be, it would be just hilarious. And I want them all to hate LeBron James. That's all they would need to do is just talk shit to LeBron James on Twitter. Ah, pff, man. The Whiteville Whiteies. I'll buy a jersey. I will buy a damn jersey. But as it stands, NBA, oof, you could whiten up a little bit. Whiten up. And last but not least, mm, the DMV. And I'm not just talking. See, the first two I was kind of, well, the first one was kind of about the company in general. And, their, and the way they advertise is, was, was probably the best way to put McDonald's is the way they advertise. It's just, ugh, it's over the top. The NBA, we're talking about, uh, you know, the demographics of the company. Let's throw, throw a couple more in there. The DMV, we're just talking about the experience. I mean, you go there, they make you wait. Everybody that works there, regardless of their skin color, has an attitude. They treat you like shit. They're short with you. DMV, whiten up. Because I attended my Coca-Cola sensitivity training for black people. And it says we need to be less white too anyway ladies and gentlemen that is the show for today i hope everybody out there's drinking pepsi <laughs> no seriously no but i'm actually not drinking i'm drinking water i'm drinking water right now I'm trying to trying to shed some of this belly fat but anyhow ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in today i will Check in with you guys again tomorrow. So until then, be less white.